Chuck, when you have something to say, and uh, and today I'm celebrating also the uh, the fact that uh, uh, finally Volume Four has has actually started to appear in bookstores, and uh, so uh, uh, in case I you know. Uh, the, the publicity people haven't done their job. Uh, you know, this is presumably at Stanford Bookstore, um, and uh, it's uh, it's not re the real volume four of the Art of Computer Programming, but it's 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 very close to what the real volume four will be. And our plan is to is to put out 128 pages uh, at a time, about twice a year, and uh, and so uh, what I'm talking about today is something that's going into the. Uh, you know, number three that's going to come out in, in summer. Um, and uh, uh, it's something I learned about in January. Uh, no, I learned about it in February, but it was, it, it was uh, the preprint was put on the web on the 10th of January. Uh, here's the, here's the, the, uh, uh, the, the source of what I'm, of, of what I'm going to be talking about. It's a paper that, Title was crossings and nestings and matching with partitions. My title for the paper is integer partitions and set partitions: a marvelous con uh, connection. Because uh, I got very excited when I saw this. Uh, in fact, this is my birthday, January 10th. Um, and the authors, um, uh, there are five authors, and um, um, uh, this, this is something that came out of a visit that Rick, Richard Stanley made to China last last summer. Um, and uh, and so uh, and so he's one of the he's the person I know. And then Bill Chen is uh, is director of a center for combinatorics at Nankai University, and these other people. And uh, and uh, the only other thing I can mention is that Catherine Yan is actually uh, in America at at Texas A and M, and she's got one of the greatest email addresses I I uh, I, I know, Cyan. Uh, Catherine Yan. Now, um, okay. So anyway, this paper excited me for other reasons than than, than cute email addresses, um, and uh, uh, I'll I'll try to uh, um, you know go through it. Uh, the idea is amazingly simple. It's something that I I'm kicking myself for not not seeing in the 60s um, because it doesn't use anything that I didn't know for for many many years, and I don't think I'm going to live. That many more years of my life, uh, uh, that will well, I mean, in anybody's life, uh, that you're going to find uh, 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 great new things out about integer partitions or, or set partitions. These these things have been studied for for ages, and so what le what left is there that, uh, fairly simple that's uh, that can be exciting that's still that's still below. But but anyway. Uh, uh, if you're not excited about it anyway, I, then I have to kick myself again because uh, when I saw this paper, I added uh, a, a page and a half to uh, uh, the next part of, of Volume Four. Uh, you know, the fascicle three that's coming out in the summer, um, and uh, that meant uh, uh, I mean I was already way over my page budget, so uh, so I decided, but I just couldn't let, leave, leave this result out of the book, and I added a page and a half. Not only that, but you know, when I get a paper that has Four Chinese, four Chinese authors that I've never heard that I've never met before. That means a lot more work for me because I put everybody's Chinese name in the index, and so it, you know it means lots of extra work to, to correspondence to find out how to do the character the correct character codes and everything else. So you, you can see that at least externally there, there's some reason to, to believe that I that I love this result. Now, uh, uh, so what is the uh, what is the what is the connection? And well, it's it's now exercise 27 in uh, what in what's going to be uh, section 7215 of the Art of Computer Programming, which and that's going to be fascicle um, uh, uh, three. Let's see, I must have that page somewhere. Where is the page? We have exercise 27 on. It's page 44. Well, maybe I didn't bring that page. Um. No big deal. Um, um, before I, oh, okay, so uh, I guess I better tell you what set partitions are and what and, and what and what integer partitions are. Um, so an example of a set partition is, um, uh, let's say I have the numbers one to nine, and I, and I can have a part, and, and a set partition might be like one, three, five. 
uh, and then I put a vertical line to say I'm in a new part of the partition 274896. This means I take this, the numbers 1 to 9, and I group, in this case, it's, it's partitioned into four blocks. Um, and uh, so 1 and 3 and 5 are in the same block, you know, you know and 2 and 7 are, are, are in another block of the partition and so on. So a set partition is a way to take a set and, and partition it into subsets, uh, disjoint subsets. And, uh, and it's, it's the same as saying we have an equivalence relation. You, you say 1 is equivalent to 3 and, and 5, and 2 is equivalent to 7 and so on. And the, the, uh, uh, any equivalence relation uh, partitions the set into things that are that are in the same block, uh, the same or equivalent to each other. Uh, so it's a hugely important concept in mathematics. Uh, then uh, an integer partition is a way to represent an integer as a sum of of other integers. Um, and uh, so an integer partition, for example, uh, here uh, the the sizes of the blocks make an integer partition. So nine is equal to three plus two plus three plus one. With the integer partition, we don't consider the order. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, uh, uh, composition is an ordered partition, but an unordered partition, uh, uh, we would say it's equal three, three, two, one. We usually, uh, w when we give a partition, uh, we usually give the give the sizes of the of the parts um, in uh, by sorting them, increasing or decreasing order. Okay, but the set partition. It's a different concept, and when you when you have a, a paper in mathematics that where it talks about partitions in the title, uh, the odds are about 70 to 30 that it's uh, that it's about integer partitions, and 30 percent that it's about set partitions. And uh, and and there's there's always been this uh, this kind of a uh, you know the, the word partition. Uh, uh, used for both concepts, we never uh, changed English to, to, to think of another word for, for the concept of a set partition. Um, and um, uh, in fact, the in integer partitions and set partitions are extremes of, uh, are sort of the opposite ends of the general idea of a multi-set partition. So, so a multi-set partition, uh, for example, I could have a, a multi-set that has one, one, two, three, 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 four, five. This is some multi-set, okay? Um, and now um, I could imagine dividing it up into into blocks, uh, whose whose union with the proper multiplicities is a set. Now, if I have a, if the multi-set happens to be one, 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 its partitions are integer partitions. And if the multi-set is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, its partitions are are set partitions. So, so the the extreme cases of of multi-set partitions. At one hand, you have integer partition. At the other hand, you have set partition. Um, but uh, but usually the the techniques that you use for one, uh, uh, you know, you, you you put one hat on for those, and you and you put another hat on when you're working on set partition. Well, what's the uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to describe um, a one-to-one -one correspondence between every set partition. And, and a sequence of integer partitions, and the and the sequence of integer partitions is uh, is is what I wish I had page 44 to show you, but I don't. Um, it's um, it's uh, 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 but it's it's probably better for me to 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 write it down. So it's a sequence of integer partitions. Usually, uh, uh, high power mathematicians use uh, lambda. To, in, to, to stand for a partition, and so it's a sequence of partitions, uh, uh, lambda one, lambda two, up to in this case lambda two n, where where n is the number of um, elements in the set that we're partitioning. So, um, and uh, and the idea is that uh, 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 each of these is an integer partition, and uh, and in fact lambda zero is zero, and lambda two n is also zero. Um, so, the, so it gets interesting in the middle, and um, the uh, and the uh, key concept is that we're going to call it a vacillating tableau loop. I didn't make up this term, but the the loop means that it sort of loops back to zero again, and um, and the tableau. You'll see why they, they chose that word. 
Um, and I think they chose the word vacillating because, you know, at the time they were doing this research, uh, uh, vacillating was one of the concepts in the presidential election. You know, this, people were talking about so, some candidates being more vacillating than others or something like that. So, so that w was a word in the, in the news, so they thought of it. But anyway, uh, that's their word for it. And the idea is that lambda um, k plus 1, um, lambda k is equal to the previous guy plus uh, uh, minus 1 to the k times e sub tk, where e is an elementary change to the partition. Um, e, e 0 is all zeros, which means the partition doesn't change. Uh, oh, oh, tk uh, is, is, uh, is between 0 and n. Uh, e1 is um, uh, 1 and then all zeros. e2 is 0, 1, all zeros, and en is is all zeros to n to n one. Uh, so, uh, so we have a sequence of integers, you know, t uh, t one, t two, up to t two n, um, which uh, uh, which describe the change we're going to make to this vacillating tableau loop. At and each time we have a partition, we're going to change it by uh, by changing just one of its components. Either equal or, or equal. maybe we won't change it at all. If we have if t k is zero, then we don't change anything. But if tk is non-zero, then uh, you know uh, if, if it's if it's two or something, then uh, uh, then we change the second uh, element of the partition. Um, now, now the partitions are supposed to be uh, in, in decreasing order. I'll give many examples, and and uh, and starting in about uh, three minutes from now, I'm going to ask you to stop me whenever you don't understand. But I know you can't possibly understand yet. But, but in three minutes, I'll, I'll have I'll get to a point where, where you know where I'm going to. I'm going to make. I'm going to start wanting to be sure that I'm in sync with everybody else on this idea. So, so, so notationally, uh, it's described this way. It says that uh, uh, you know uh, we we take away an element, maybe, then we possibly add an element, then we possibly take one away, then we possibly add, and so on. Now we have to. We can't use any any such sequence because. Uh, uh, it might turn out that they, that we can't add something, uh, and, and and we no longer have a partition. Uh, I mean, things won't, the th things won't be in order anymore, because lambda k is going to be is going to be a sequence of elements a a k one a k two, uh, and so on, uh, that are that are uh, sorted. They're going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, uh, and always. Uh, non-negative. So, so uh, the idea here is that uh, uh, certain sequences are going to work and certain certain aren't. Now, um, uh, I uh, exercise 27 uh, asks first of all for the reader to find all the oscillating, all the vacillating tableau loops that, uh, uh, in the case n equals four. Um, n equals four, it, you know, uh, uh, is small enough that it, um, that you can do it easily, and large enough that uh, it's not trivial. Um, and the number of partitions of a set of four elements is 15. So you have, so, so there, there better be 15 vacillating uh, tableau loops. And uh, uh, here's the answer, um, uh, which I'm sure, where I'm. Um, can, can we? Can you see that? Yeah, zoom. That's very good. So, 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 so take the first one. All zeros. That's certainly a, a tableau loop. Nothing happens, right? Uh, and then here's here's one. It, you know, it gets to be a one. I, I've listed them in in, in dic dictionary order here. So it gets to be a one uh, at this point. Uh, that that must be a, in an even numbered position because uh, because we can only increase when we're at an even numbered position. We decrease when when we're at an odd numbered position. Um, uh, so uh, these are all the uh, all the cases, and, and so it, really, there's only two uh, uh, cases where we where we get past zeros and ones, and here's a case where we have a partition that has two ones in it, and here's a partition that has a, a two in it. All right, but but uh, it, it's kind of a, a, a tricky condition. That, you know, you, can, you, uh, you if you if you try to play around with this. Uh, 
then you um, um, will uh, find out that you better look ahead if you're going to get back to zero at the end. Um, so, uh, well, when, when n gets bigger and bigger, it gets a lot. The, the, the partitions in, in the middle get much more interesting, as we're going to see. But uh, anyway, that's the definition of a vacillating tableau loop. And I want to, before I go into it, I want to, I, I want to describe uh, one more thing: is uh, a, a convenient notation for set partitions. Uh, so, set partition. Uh, uh, one way is to write the blocks like this, as I did, but another nice way is what they call a restricted growth string, um, a restricted growth sequence, and um, and the idea is that you that you give n uh, symbols. Uh, uh, first, uh, you say what class is 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 one in, then two, then three, then four, and so on up to n, and uh, and you start with zero. So one is, uh, we'll call this block zero, block one, block two, block three, and we start with zero. Um, and then two uh, is in, in block one. And uh, in a restricted growth sequence, uh, uh, well, let, let me write it out first. And, and, and uh, So three is in block zero, four is in block two, five is in block zero, six is in block three, seven is in block uh, one, uh, eight and nine are both in block two. Okay, so this restricted growth sequence is another way to talk about this set partition one three five two seven four eight nine six. Is are, do people understand that? You look at this and you can see, oh yeah, one three and five are equivalent. They got the same number. Two and seven are equivalent. Um, uh, you know, four, eight, and nine are equivalent because they have the same number. Now it's called a restricted growth sequence. Uh, the rule is that if you if um, Whenever you choose a number for the first time, uh, it has to be just one bigger than the ones you've seen before. So after so after I've after I've got after I've done 0102, my next choice has to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. But I, but I couldn't go to 4 at this point because 3 hasn't occurred yet. After this, again, I can go 0, 1, 2, 3. After this, 0, 1, 2, or 3. And that, now I could introduce a 4 if I wanted to. Okay, so that's a restricted growth sequence, and and, the, and every every restricted growth sequence uh, is a set partition, and and every set partition is is a restricted growth sequence. So it's a it's a it's an easy way to store to, to deal with them inside a computer uh, to work with restricted. And, and so that's what I did on this chart here. I showed the different restricted growth sequences for n equals four, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, two, and and I put next to it uh, the uh, uh, the, the vacillating tableau loop that, that we're going to show uh, corresponds to these. So I have to get uh, I have to get a connection between these things, um, and, uh, uh, and so the, the, in the rest of my lecture, I'm going to explain why there's a, a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, uh, set partitions and these ta these these loops of of ordinary integer partitions, uh, and then why this has uh, uh, really extraordinary consequences that are sort of mind-boggling. Okay. Now, um, uh, the the construction that I need is based on a couple of ideas that were in Volume Three of the Art of Computer Programming, and the first uh, the first nice idea uh, due to uh, uh, Kaplansky, uh, and then uh, uh, he he worked with John Reardon in, during the during the Second World War. Uh, says that th there's a one-to-one -one correspondence, a really simple way to 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 uh, 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 to represent set partitions uh, in terms of rooks on a triangular chessboard. Anybody here who doesn't know what a, what a rook is in a chessboard? So, okay. So uh, so here uh, we have a um, uh, a triangular chessboard, and uh, we, got, we, we place rooks in it uh, that can't attack each other. That means that we have uh, we don't have any two rooks in the same row. We don't have any two rooks in the same column, and that's the, the and and every way there is to put uh, rooks into a triangular chessboard corresponds to exactly one uh, set partition. And uh, I mean you uh, you don't have to. You, know, you, you can't actually place too many rooks, um, 
and you don't put put any any down at all that corresponds to a set partition and so this so and the rule is extremely simple in fact I'm going to actually you know I didn't know when I wrote volume three that I was going to be talking about tableaus when I when I got into volume four so I'm going to tip the triangular board this way but the rooks will still still go on so let me show you the the way I represent that in a triangular array and I I draw the number I put the numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine along the edge and now if I want to say one is 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 equivalent to three I put an X in in column one and row three and then three is equivalent to five I put an X three to five I always go to the next one that that it's that it's equivalent to so five doesn't have any you know five is the top guy in his block so nothing there two goes to seven so there's going to be a an X up here I've tried to draw some lines that make it make it a little easier then what do I do for four four goes to eight and eight goes to nine okay so now I've put at most one rook in every column at most one rook in every row which row which rook did I put in a row well if if I'm not the smallest in the block the rook in that row is is your neighbor to the left in the block what what rook do I put in the column if you're not the the biggest in your in your block that's your neighbor to the right in your block okay so by looking at the by looking at the rooks I know what set partition I have and the so so anyway here we are with a with a connection between set partitions and rooks and now that's going to be the key to our our integer partitions that's coming up next well right after this part of right after the page where I had this picture of the rooks so the next page starts the section of of volume three that talks about tableaus and these are fascinating concept that that seems to have tremendous applications in in mathematical physics and many other things because the because it relates to basic properties of part of permutations and and a tableau is is an array of integers that looks like this for example it's increasing in rows and and increasing in the columns and it's and it's these rows are 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 left justified so so the shape of the tableau is a partition this you know here's a partition of six four three one one and that's a partition of 16 and and the number right here I put the numbers one to 16 into a tableau and one of the one of the most I don't know amazing fundamental and so on the operations was discovered is now it's called the Robinson Shenstead algorithm and I so I started out that part of volume three talking about how to insert a new element into a tableau I guess I don't have an eight in this one so there's a there's a good algorithm that by which I can insert a new guy into that into into a tableau somebody who isn't already there and and it works like this I try to put it in the first row and in such a way that the first row is not going to nobody's going to get bigger in the first row so I can't put it on top you know the one 
Eight is bigger than one, so, so I, I, I want anything to get bigger, but I could put it on top of the nine because the nine w w would get smaller, go to an eight. Um, I couldn't put it on the 12 because, not, because then it, wouldn't, it would be out of order. So, so, I, so I changed the 9, I put an 8, and now I, and now I insert 9 into the rest of it um, uh, uh, as before. So, so the 9 is going to fit here in place of the 10. The 10 is going to place here, uh, fit here in, in place of the 13. And the 13 is going to fall on the next row. It's going to fit uh, uh, to the right in place of an infinity that was sort of sitting there. Um, so, I, so, so I put in the element eight, and that that bumped the nine and the and the ten and the thirteen down. And this bumping algorithm is uh, is easy to learn and and uh, has these properties that uh, I explained in the uh, um, in in this algorithm on page forty nine of volume three. Uh, this is you know it, this bumping algorithm uh, is is given there and and and, and proved. And then uh, the uh, the beautiful thing is that also uh, we can go we can go backwards. This algorithm has an inverse. Somebody tells me uh, uh, delete the element that was in that was in this position. There's only way there's only one way we could have filled that uh, that 13. The 13 had to come from the previous line, and uh, uh, and so it would have to have, have uh, been displaced by a 10. And then the 10 had to go up to the second line and it had to have been displaced by a 9. And the 9 had to come from the first line. And so um, uh, the 8 had to have been the thing that we inserted. So, in other words, you can – this. so with, with every tableau, we have an algorithm putting something in the tableau. And we can and, – and, and if somebody tells you where, which, which was the new guy filled up in the, in, in the thing, you can undo it. And figure out where you came from again. Uh, that's the co that's the, the theorem that um, is is on page 51 of volume three. It says there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between all permutations and the set of ordered pairs of tableaus having the same shape. Um, and uh, uh, the actual um, uh, idea is. Um, uh, it works. It works also with um, uh, in more, more general under more general conditions. Instead of a permutation, we have any any two line any any two line array of stuff where we say Q1 is, uh, is less than Q2 or less than Qn, and P1s are all are, are all different. And a permutation is the case where the Qs are one, two, three, four up to n, and the Ps are just the 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 numbers uh, uh, in in some other order. Um, so here's an here's an example of this generalized permutation. It, it would be one, three, five, six, eight uh, in two line over seven, two, nine, five, three. And uh, and in in the book, I, I go through play by play. Uh, uh, you start with an empty tableau, and we insert the, the first guy seven, and uh, and then we put in Q the place where we inserted it. Then I insert the next guy, which is two. Well. Two is going to bump the seven down, and uh, and uh, and then I, I put a three uh, below it, uh, where I in the place that that, that just be, uh, just became filled. Okay, now for nine, what's going to happen? Well, nine is going to fit in the front row. Uh, 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 two followed by nine still leaves a tableau. That's good. So then I can put the nine here, and the five goes in there. Next, I insert a five at the left. Five is not going to fit at the end of the first row. It's going to bump the nine down, but the nine will fit there. So I so I continue, and, and so I have this algorithm of inserting a new guy and, and bumping, and and uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, this means that given any two-line array like this, um, I I can fill I, I can find two tableaus that are of the same shape. Every time I'm putting something in on, uh, in Q, I'm, I'm putting in a bigger element that, that what was before. So it's definitely a, a tableau here, and this bumping algorithm keeps keeps the P's uh, as 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 tableaus. So uh, every permutation gives us these t two tableaus, and you can also go backward, because if I have to go back and say what permutation caused this, well. I look at the highest element in Q that was eight. So I said, "Oh, okay. This this seven must have come from somewhere. So the seven is going to." So so I use the deletion algorithm, and the deletion algorithm says the only way I could have got from that is by pop popping the three out 
of this of this p tableau. So I pop the three out and I get back to here, and then and then I take off the six and I pop I pop the nine. You know, the nine is going to pop out the five, and so that so I can reconstruct the original one three five six eight seven two nine five three from these two tableaus. Okay, now that is the that is uh, the amazing uh, uh, correspondence of Robinson and Jensted that um, um, is going to be the key to what we do now. Um, so, um, uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to think of this. Uh, uh, Here I have my my uh, set partition represented uh, by rooks, and uh, uh, and I write that as a, a, a sequence um, where I say you know the, the, the let's see which way do I want to do I want to do it page seventy there I go. okay so um, I'll say one three Two seven um, three five four eight eight nine. Um, in other words, one successor is three, two successor is seven, three successor is five, four successor is eight, five doesn't have a successor, six six doesn't either, not near to seven. Eight has nine as a successor. So here's a two-line array that describes the position of these rooks. And I can now go and um, uh, get a one-to-one -one correspondence between these uh, this two-line array and um, uh, my uh, and, and two tableaus. But instead, we 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 do it a more tricky way, and we. We fought, and, and, and he, so here's my uh, let's see, Sean, how how large can you make this? Try, try to go for the max. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I've got not I've, I've got a set partition of nine elements. I'm I'm going to I'm going to do 18 steps. I'm going to get eight. I'm going to make a vacillating tableau loop of size 2n, which is 18 in this case. Um, and uh, I'm I'm going to. Um, um, uh, uh, walk around the edge, zero, one, two, three, four. These tiny little numbers here, uh, and I'm going to do an 18-step process. And, 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 and wherever I am, I'm going to look at the rectangle above the point where I am. So I start out, and um, and uh, the first from zero to one, it's always uh, uh, is always trivial. In fact, it, you might uh, think it's really stupid the way I defined a vacillating tableau loop because I'm saying that lambda one. I said, I said that lambda one has to be equal to lambda zero minus e sub t one, and uh, but but lambda zero is zero, so I can't possibly take anything away from it. So so lambda one is always zero, and similarly lambda two n minus one is always zero. So it seems like you know I'm wasting a lot of energy by writing these extra zeros here. But it makes the it makes the uh, th things. Uh, 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 cleaner and more general, uh, uh, so it's why we why we did it. But now, but now when when I go um, uh, uh, on the next step here, from step one to step two, now my rectangle all of a sudden gained a rook. And so at that point, I I, I put one three into uh, here's my rook. It's it's in column uh, one and, and row three. Um, and so I um, uh, and then uh, and then I move to step two. And at step two, I still have one three. But, but then I, when I go over to step three, I move to the right here. I pick up another rook. So then I got one three and two um, seven. And I, and I walk along here. And 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 uh, when I go up to the next step, I lose the one three, and 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 only the two seven remains. Because th this rook has now. You know, I've, I've, I'm always taking the rectangle based on where I am. So, so I've lost a rook at this point when I went from from, li from step four to step five here. This little four to this five, and here I gain a rook. Here, here, here I don't. You know, it stays the same. Here I gain a rook. Here I lose a rook. Okay, but now I keep track of I, I keep track of two line arrays 
of what rooks I uh, what rooks I currently um, are, are currently in this rectangle to my left. You get it, Lyle? <laughs> All right. So I'm, so, so I'm, you know, I'm wandering along the edge. I'm along the edge of here. When I'm making an, a step upward, is where I could lose a rook. If I'm making a step, if I'm making a step to the right, I could gain a rook. So, the, so the total number of rooks is vacillating in this way, exactly the, the way the way it wanted. Okay. So. Uh, uh, and, and I get a two-line array at every point uh, showing what the rooks are. So um, I can put the two-line. I, I, so every two-line array can be represented by by equal tableau, by equal shape tableaus, P and Q. So so like when I had one three, this was my P and Q, one three. Okay. Um, but now when I put the two seven in there, um, I. Um, uh, then I have to, you know, decide how to insert the seven. Uh, um, there's going to be a two on the right. And in this case, uh, it turned out that uh, it's better. Uh, uh, we, although I could have changed all the notation, it's better to to use decreasing order on the p tableau, increasing order on the q tableau. So I'm I'm going to do the same bumping algorithm as before, but I'm going to make the tableau go decreasing. And instead of increasing, uh, the same algorithm you just change less, less than to greater than all the way through, uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's probably why it took it, it took so many years before people thought of this idea because it, now uh, things are, are uh, this this simple thing uh, using uh, decreasing order in P and increasing in Q um, makes makes these things all of a sudden uh, 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 easier to. To, uh, to um, notate and, and work with. So, uh, so the seven is is then instead of making three followed by seven, I'm going to have a seven bumping the three down, and uh, and I get this array. And then um, uh, and then the, um, the uh, uh, I lose the one three. Uh, so at that point, the three disappears, and um, from the p array. Uh, you know, we just take it out, and and uh, the two displaces the one. So I delete two from the Q array. I, I mean, I delete the, the the cell in the second row from the Q array, which means that the one has to come out the top, and, and that's uh, okay. So uh, uh, the process continues um, at even numbered steps. We might add a, a a new element when five comes in. It fits like this. Uh, on odd numbered steps. We might lose an element, so at step nine uh, here, uh, the five goes away, um, and the, and the three uh, pops up because there was a three five that's disappearing. Uh, so here's the, in other words, we have this complete description of the uh, of this set partition uh, as a sequence of tableaus that's growing, shrinking, growing, shrinking, um, and uh, uh, now, now we throw away the numbers and we only look at the shapes. So the shapes are partitions. So, so the partition is, uh, you know, I didn't show step one, zero, and one. So, so actually, if I if I if I if I give you just the partitions, it's zero. You know, we start with zero, zero. Then at step two, we have have one. The shape is one. Here I have a shape one, one. You know, you know or, or one row and another row. And then I'm back to one. Here I have a shape two, uh, two, two one, one one, one one, one one, one one, one one. Okay. Now, so I've got this set of partitions here, or the sequence of partitions here that's vacillating, <laughs> comes back to zero, um, and um, uh, the sequence uh, has this property, by the way, that. Um, uh, we can we know when we've when the thing stays the same it stays the same if there's i mean an odd numbered step stays the same if there's nothing in the column if there's even number steps if there's nothing in the row so anyway something like that we can we can tell by looking at this which rows were filled and which columns were filled um, but we can also tell exactly exactly where they are and that's the 
and that's the amazing thing. I, 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 I could figure out uh, the P's and the Q's uh, just by knowing the shapes. And um, the reason is, um, uh, well, the, the, of course, the reason is simple, uh, because uh, of the of this magical Robinson Shedstead process. Um, so let's suppose that I that I didn't know um, what's happening when I'm going from step set. Step seven, uh, uh, I'm, um, I'm going to fill in the, the I, I, I'm going to show how to fill in the cues. And suppose I got up to step seven and I know that, and I know that, um, uh, that I have two, three here in Q. And I'm going to go to step eight, uh, and uh, if, we, if I go up to my diagram here from, um, from seven to eight is, is this step here, which is adding adding an element, right? Um, but all I know, all, all I'm told is that, um, is that the Tableau gained a new element down here. Um, but what new element uh, uh, could it possibly have gained um, uh, when I'm going from, when I'm going from seven to eight? Uh, uh, because, um, uh, it's column four, so so it has to be a four. It's, it, the only you know the, the new element that gets added when I add an element is is a, it, it, when I'm doing eight, I'm I, I'm always adding a four, and if I'm doing ten, I'd be adding a five, and if I you know I'm, if I'm doing step two k, I'm getting I'm adding a k. So so uh, uh, it's easy to to go from seven to eight and figure out this must be two three four. Now, what about step nine? Step nine, I'm told that the, that the shape now goes like this. So, what what uh, what is Q going to be at, after step nine? Uh, all I'm told is that the shape that the partition has now lost this element in the first row. Well, um, uh, you see, that's the deletion algorithm for tableaus. It says uh, just delete the element three, and so it so the two and four. Day. Um, that was that was maybe too easy. Uh, I mean, to delete the three is easier. What if I had deleted instead this four? What would have happened? Well, then you see the four would have had to been bumped. Would have had to been bumped by somebody in the previous row, and it would have been it wouldn't have been bumped by the two because it couldn't have been four three. So it had to be two four. So so the four would have had to. Had to, had had to be bumped by the three, and the three would would have popped out the top. So so in general, I can go through just from the shapes, and I can figure out what the cues are. And uh, go, going in forward order, and the same same argument uh, if you think about it, going backward, you can fill in all the p's going from the end to to, to the beginning. Um, and so uh, it, but uh, actually, as long as you know what. That, that the, you know that the three got got bounced out at this point uh, wh when nine was added, then then you know exactly which rook it was in 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 row uh, in the row that that, that we're that we're going up here. Uh, we're going for, from eight to nine. We're we're going from row four to row five uh, to row three, no to row row four to row five. Uh, so so that says that it must have been a three five. There must have been a rook in three five. So 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 the guy that so, so in other words, uh, if somebody gives you a sequence of, of these integer partitions, then um, you you don't have to work with the p's at all. You can just uh, suffice it to do with the q's. Uh, you can, um, um, uh, if you're at step two k and you added a new element, just put k in the in the new position that just showed up in the partition. If you're at step two k plus one, and you, you're deleting an element. Uh, uh, you take the place in the partition that you want to get rid of. You, you 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 use your deletion algorithm and see what pops out the top. And that's the that's where the rook was in position k in, in row k. So this tells you what the, where the rooks are in each, in every row. So that's the that's the uh, the one to one correspondence between integer partitions and set partitions. Every every set partition gives me this. Sequence of integer partitions from which I can reconstruct the set partition uniquely. Okay, so that is the now. 
now the uh, 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 for some of the amazing consequences of this result. Okay. So uh, and most of the consequences that I know are uh, fall from the the uh, idea of taking the transpose or the conjugate of integer partition. So if I have a if I have an integer partition, let's take uh, you know uh, uh, what was the one I had a minute ago. Uh, uh, we said uh, six four six four three one one. So it's one two three four five six four three one one. Um, it has a conjugate, so you know this is lambda. Then it has the transpose. The conjugate is uh, just like you do with uh, with uh, taking the transpose of a matrix. So it has six in the first column, and then four, and then three, um, and then one one. Okay. So here's the five three three two one one is the conjugate of so you know six four three one one conjugate is equal to five three three two one one. Okay. Now, um, uh, obvious idea Le leads to lots of, of startling properties of integer partitions. For example, the number of integer partitions with largest part six is also equal to the number of partitions that have exactly six parts. Um, uh, but now we got a, a vacillating tableau loop, lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda 2n. Um, uh, we can form its transpose, transposes. Um, and lo and behold, these are also form a, a, a vacillating tableau loop. Because if you if you add one element if, if if you if you add an element to a to a partition, uh, you're adding an element to its conjugate. If you're taking an element away from a partition, you're taking an element away from its conjugate. So so we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, set partitions and their duals. So, so let's call this the dual set partition. So 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 this corresponds to some set partition pi, and this corresponds to the dual of pi. Whatever that means. Okay. So, so now we have an operation on set partitions uh, that takes every set partition into some other set partition. That is, that is, uh, uh, well, there it is. It's the dual. And um, here's where, here's where the uh, 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 the, the amazing st things start to happen. Let's first take, let's take a look um, at. Uh, uh, at a at, at, uh, couple of things first. Um, uh, so in order, f if you want to play around with this, I've got a computer program that I put on the web called Vacillate. And you just go to my home page and then click on downloadable programs and you, you know, you get the program. And I just put it, I just put it there. It's, uh, it, it, you have to, you have to, uh, uh, you have to use C-Web, uh, which is easy to install. Uh, um, but anyway, I, I have this way of of writing programs that uh, means that I can get a lot. My programs done much faster than anybody else I know. So, so. Uh, but here I said I wrote. I write the following code in awful hurry. So there was no time to. You know, okay, I wrote the following code in awful hurry. Uh, uh, anyway, it. But it's all there, and it gives you a chance to play around with. Um, uh, with things, and here, for example, is the partition that I did in my. Uh, I, 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 I have a. I put in a file this restricted growth string, which is which is for this uh, partition here, zero one zero two zero three one 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 two two. All right, and then um, it will uh, it will tell you uh, what the partition is at each step, uh, and what the uh, rows, uh, what the P and Q. Uh, entries are if you know you, you can shut you can shut verbose off and you don't get all this but it tells you it, you know if you want to know what the p's and q's are it tells you uh, what they are and then it tells you the dual uh, so what's the dual of this partition um, uh, it is um, two three four six seven eight nine 
Okay, well, what do you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoops, I, I made it too big. Sorry. Okay. Um, so um, it says its dual is 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 2, 1, 1. Um, so that says, you know, um, I could call it 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, 2, 1, 1. So 1, is, 1, 5 are equivalent, 2 and 3 are equivalent, 3 is equivalent to 8, uh, eight and uh, 4 is equivalent to 7. Um, uh, th three is, is at the top there. Uh, two is, is the top. Eight and nine are equivalent. Nope, oh, eight and nine. What's going on? Let me uh, let me scratch that. Right. Oh, here we go. Um, I need uh, graph paper. Aha. Okay. I found out to my great surprise that the theory group at Stanford Computer Science Department does not have a stock of graph paper tablets. <laughs> I had to go down to the graphics group down on, on the uh, third floor. Okay, so um, anyway, we got nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, um, and. Um, And I'm saying that 1 is equivalent to 5. Whoa. <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> OK. One, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. OK, so OK, so 1 is equivalent to 5. I put a rook there. Uh, 2 is equivalent to 3, 3 is equivalent to 8, 8 is equivalent to 9, 4 is equivalent to 7, I think that's it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, nope, I'm missing something, 3, 1, 1, 2 to 3, 3 to 8, 8 to 9, Excuse me? So 5 is, one, two, three, four. no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I should have only five rooks, because I started with five rooks. The uh, number of rooks stays the same. In fact, uh, what stays the same under duality? Um, uh, the number of rooks in every row stays the same under duality. The number of rooks in every column stays the same. Um, because I, I got a, a, a rook in this column only if I, if I increased the partition when I went there. So, so I've got five rooks uh, in the same columns as I had before and, and in the same rows as I had before. Now, <clears throat> um, the main, uh, the, the main thing that is known that, that about Tableaus, however, it, it, which is the wonderful thing about these, it, uh, about them, is that the number of rows in the tableau, the, the, the size of, of the first row in the tableau, is the length of the longest increasing subsequence of the permutation that you started with. Um, and uh, this is, and the number of, of uh, I mean, the number of columns, and the, and the number of, of rows is the is the length of the longest. Uh, decreasing subsequence. So, so um, uh, what what that means is that um, I've got uh, when I'm looking at a a uh, uh, any one of these any one of these rectangles that I've got that that, that I'm working with as I'm as I'm crawling along the edge here, and I and I, I have these these rectangles. Um, the rooks that I'm seeing in the rectangle. Uh, Correspond to a two-line array, and a uh, an increasing sequence of length four corresponds to a bunch of 
of x's that 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 go up. And the decreasing sequence corresponds to a bunch of x's that, that go down. And when you transpose and get the dual, every increasing sequence, uh, uh, I mean, all, the rows and columns get switched around. And so that it says that every time I have one of these squares here that had, an, well, this this is here, here's a here's a case. This square, uh, I mean, it's not a, it's a, this rectangle uh, has has two rooks in it, um, and it's it's a decrease, right? So I look in the dual at, at those same at the same place. It's an increase. And 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 the theorem is there exists a an, an increasing set of k rooks in one of these rectangles if and only if there's a decreasing set of of k rooks in the dual rectangle in in the rectangle in that same rectangle of the dual. Now, what does that mean in, in, as far as set partitions are concerned? Well, um, when we one one way to an, another way to um, uh, to represent set partitions. In fact, this was uh, very popular in Japan uh, going back uh, 400 years, uh, or more than 400 years, is to is is to connect uh, the ele the elements of the same class by line like this. Okay, and and they had these diagrams. It was they had it's a long story which is which you can read about in another one of my <laughs> fascicles. But anyway, this. Uh, th this is another way to describe a set partition by 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 having these little comb-like objects uh, uh, for, for the for the classes of things. And now, if, um, if if you can draw these without crossing each other, that's called nesting. And so, what's hap What does it mean when you have nesting? That it, so 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 so, uh, so so you have nesting. You know, this is nested inside of this, is nested inside of this. Well, this means that I1 is equivalent to J1, and I2 is equivalent to J2, and I3 is equivalent to J3. And so you have, uh, uh, you have, you have elements of the, uh, so there are rooks, I1, J1, you know, I1, J1, I2, J2, I3, J3, um, uh, where the uh, I's are going up and the J's are going down. And there's this uh, this other place in the middle here where, where, where we're looking at the rectangle. So, so when we're looking at a rectangle uh, that sits between I3 and J3, we see these uh, we see these three rooks, and so we see a, an increasing sequence. Uh, I mean, a, de a decreasing sequence here. The J's are going down. Yeah. But if I have um, uh, <coughs> if I have the other way, where I have crossings, so so so, the, so, so here I have uh, you know I1 is equivalent to J1, and I2 is equivalent to J2, I3 is equivalent to J3, uh, <coughs> and these are crossing now. <coughs> um, it's the opposite of, of nesting. Uh, it's, you know, it, instead of, it's, nesting means it's not intersecting. Here it means it's, 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 definitely, it's definitely intersecting, it's definitely crossing. And so you have a crossing. So what happens is in the dual, the, whenever you have, uh, uh, you know, five things nested within each other, uh, then the original must have had five things crossing, mutually crossing each other. And so, the, so, so, so this magical operation converts nestings to crossings. And, 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 uh, and, and so it's very uh, 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 re remarkable in that way. So it preserves the, you know, it preserves the, the number of, of partitions, but it converts uh, the number of blocks of the partition, but it but but duality changes nesting to crossing um, in every rectangle. Uh, so so you keep the statistics. How many rectangles have have so, have have uh, a maximum increasing? You know have, have have so many nestings and how many have uh, this? These statistics are preserved by this this dual construction. But abs but it's, it it was amazing to people. That they should, that should be any connection whatsoever between nesting and crossing. They seem like totally, uh, uh, totally different concepts. Well, um, now let me t let me uh, 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 show you some some, some, some more stuff. Um, uh, let's take uh, special special cases of set partition. Um, one important special case of a set partition is a matching. This is a, a, a matching is where all the blocks are size two. 
you divide the set n into pairs. Okay, so that's a matching. Uh, so, it, so this theorem applies to matchings. It says that if I have any matching, I can find a sequence of integer partition of vacillating tableau loop that describes this matching, and its dual will also be a matching. Uh, because why the, the property of a matching is that every element is either uh, the smallest of a block or the largest of a block. And it's the smallest of a block if and only if its row is zero, and it's the largest of a block if and only if its column is zero. So that's preserved by duality, the, 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 whether the row and column is zero. So, so, every, um, so, so the dual of a, of a matching is, is a matching. Not only is dual of a matching is a matching, a dual of a matching has the same elements that are the, the smallest in their block as it has as, as elements that are largest in their block. Let's take a random matching. Let's see. Do I have, do I have one here? I try to I, I try to uh, 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 a matching. Well, um, I think I do have one. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm, well, um, so uh, yeah, here it is. Um, here I here I have an example of a matching. So there's two zeros, two ones, two twos, three two threes, two fours, and I describe them by by these rooks, by these five rooks. And uh, uh, you'll notice that uh, there's uh, uh, there's three three of these uh, crossing each other here. Uh, now when I take the dual. I get this matching, and you'll notice that, th that there are three nested uh, uh, pairs here. Zero, the one's inside of the zero, and the two inside of the one. The three crosses the zero, however. Uh, become, uh, well, um, uh, the number three doesn't have to necessarily correspond to the number three on that side. Uh, this one is nested inside of this one, so it's probably this two is the one that corresponds to three over on this side. Because this one, this two is is uh, is uh, uh, crossing with this guy, but it's nesting on, on, on this one. Anyway, uh, there's the, there's an, uh, an example, but you see the the guys who are smallest in their block, um, uh, uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, are are the same as the guys who are smallest in the block over here. So some and 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 the the, the guys who are highest in their block have already have also changed places, but it's, they change places in a rather strange 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 way. Um, I haven't psyched it out, although I do have something that I found uh, an hour ago. Well, no, three thirty two hours ago, uh, uh, that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, so <clears throat> anyway. Matchings, however, give you one nice uh, uh, application of this, saying that nested matchings and uh, correspond to uh, one to one somehow with uh, uh, cross cr crosses of matchings. Um, now, a special case of matchings is bipartite matching. Uh, bipartite matching, where I have two n elements, and I say I'm going to all match everything in the lower half. To, the, to, to, to one of the guys in the upper half. And uh, those are the same as permutations. Uh, if, it, uh, it's, it's easy to see that, you know, if I, it, suppose I number the, the guys at the bottom, I call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the guys at the top, I call them 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Well, every permutation of 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is a way to match 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to, to you know, to the, to the square. So, so there are, um, so, uh, another special case of this is permutations. Every permutation has a dual permutation. Um, and that means it, um, that really I'm just, um, uh, you know, I have a set partition, uh, but, but in a very special case that all the rooks are actually going in this square part up here. And so I just put, you know, I just put some, I just put rooks here in some, in, in some, permutation, and then I get a, uh, a bipartite matching. Okay. So I, I, um, we get then the notion of du duality between uh, permutations. 
And so there are six permutations of three elements. Do this show here. OK. And here's what the here's what the duals are. And you might think it's clear what what's happening. Well, the identity permutation goes into this opposite one. And these things sort of seem to rotate. I think it's bothering. Here's a list of all the 24 permutations and their duals. And if you if you can psych out what what it means, please let me know. I think it's I think it's just it's a total mystery, although very simple. You can work out that, you know, you can find the tableaus. You can you can you can transpose them and you get and you get the dual. And you can use my vacillate program and feed in, you know, bipartite matchings and you'll get the dual partition. It'll tell you what they are. And how I found one one nice thing about the dual of a partition. And that is if you well, I found eight nice things about them. Well, seven. If you rotate the square by 90 degrees, it's dual also rotates by 90 degrees. And if you flip it left and right, it's 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 dual also flips. So although I although we define the the concept of dual by working sort of only for looking upward and, you know, we were only looking north and west as we're as we're doing this duality process. Actually, the the algorithm is nice enough mathematically that it's going to actually, you know, we could have been been attacking it from any of the any of the directions. So all the eight symmetries of the square are preserved under this. So the duality commutes with with the 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 symmetries of the square, the left reflection up and down rotation. So what you just made the observation or you proved this? I proved it. Yes. Here's the proof. The proof is actually you see if a corresponds to B, then it's reversal left to right reversal corresponds. And this is by theorem. What? Five, one, four, D, part B. And and it's easier to say if a corresponds to B, then their transpose correspond to transposes. And this is because it's well known that the that the that the Robinson Jensen algorithm, if you transpose the permutation, you interchange P and Q. And so so it has to be. So all you're doing is interchanging P and Q. And if P is being transposed and Q is being transposed. Well, anyway, this is the this, I believe, is the proof. So the but here I show an example of a sort of a random seven by seven permutation and it's dual. And I, you know, I just don't. As far as I know, it's it's a complete mystery as to what as to this magical operation, what it is. And so, you know, but we know partial information. Now, I tried one funny thing. I tried an eight by eight and and I and all of the examples I had before when they were when when I changed rooks to queens, it the dual will also work. Now, I have a solution to the queen's problem and I took the dual and the dual was also a solution to the queen's problem. Oh, no, this can't be true. And and sure enough, it wasn't. And here's here's an example of a thing where there's no rooks in the same diagonal as well. And the and the dual definitely didn't work. But the first time I I did it, I I was you know, I thought, my gosh, what is going on here? But no, it's not that good. But the but there but this mysterious duality on on permutation, I mean, I is is there. And the the law, the rule is that it's it's dual is sort of related to something that's described in in my discussion of insertion of Schutz and Berger's 
transformation on tableaus has to, is, is related to this. Anyway, that's but but uh, still, uh, I don't I, I, I don't see anything uh, geometric that and, and you see every permutation that has uh, an, um, uh, an increasing sequence of like, you know, X is going upward. Three of them here. There's got to be three of them coming downward in, in the dual. Um, and you could get that effect by tipping the thing over, but that's not the dual. <laughs> Um, okay, question? Does um, the dual preserve uh, anything about the decomposition of the permutation into cycles? I don't know. It'd be too worth trying. I haven't, uh, I haven't, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, uh, if you look at the date of this sheet, it's, it's today. I, 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 <laughs> I was just thinking about this, you know, uh, just before lunch. So, um, I, the identity, the, the dual is the. The ideal, this right, that's a, the, the identity true. goes into the reverse. In, into the reverse, so so, oh, so, the so, so uh, it doesn't preserve the cycle structure. It doesn't preserve the cycle structure, but it maybe uh, the sum of the two is constant or something. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, you know, maybe something about the number of inversions. You know, there's all kinds of statistics about permutations that might have, might might or might not be, be transformed in interesting ways by this property. Uh, okay, now, um, so uh, um, I did find something, uh, and that is uh, if another important kind of matching is a, a matching with no nestings at all. Or no, I mean, no no crossings at all. And these are the non-crossing uh, thing. These are, for example, a matching with no cr crossings is, uh, is is nested parenthesis. Uh, you match the left parenthesis with the right parenthesis, right? So, so uh, uh, I take um, uh, uh, a random binary tree, uh, which I don't know where I put it. I thought I brought it with me, but I don't seem to have. Uh, that's a shame. Well, um, I've got. I do have the uh, example though. Okay, so uh, take a. So yeah, here's a restricted growth string for a, for a, uh, a set of nested parentheses where there's two zeros, two ones, two twos, and so on. So think of the two zeros as a left and right parentheses. Two ones as left and right parentheses. The two twos here. And so so this describes some big nested sequence of parentheses. I'm using hexadecimal notation here to get the AA because they ran out of, of digits after nine. Um, okay, that's that's a um, um, uh, nested parentheses like this, and the twos go in here, and the threes go here, and the fours there, and so on. Everything is nicely nested. All right. So now we can we can apply the algorithm, and we can we can find what's the dual. And the dual, <laughs> um, it has only crossings, no nesting at all. And so the dual is, you know, zero one. Zero, the one, ones cross, the twos, cr the twos come here, the threes cross, the fours cross, and so on. Well, uh, I looked at this and and um, I compared it to the original, and it's very simple. To, what, what happened here? Now I've matched every, I've matched the first left parenthesis to the first left parenthesis, the second left, uh, first right parenthesis, the first. The second left parenthesis, the second right parenthesis. In, in other words, it, 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 as you run through along, it, it, as you run along this uh, this thing here, uh, you can you, you, you keep the, the unpaired parenthesis in the stack, and uh, and then uh, when you get to a, when you get to a, a, a right parenthesis, you output the top of the stack. Um, but now, if you use a queue instead of a stack. So you out output from the bottom instead. So first in, first out, instead of last in, first out. Then you get the um, the only crossing and, and no nesting version. Okay. So that's now a sub. I, I know for for this kind of matching, I know exactly what the dual is. The dual is the difference between a stack and a queue. All right. Now, ah, uh, so I tried, uh, but I know that there's another way to represent. Uh, uh, Forests, not only with not 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 with parentheses, but instead you you consider the um, uh, two things are equivalent if and only if they have the same parent. 
and that turns out to be a non uh, non crossing partition of a set. If 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 if, if, if you, you are equivalent to your siblings, um, so if so so anybody who's between you and your siblings, I mean this is in pre order. So if anybody's between you and your siblings, uh, they aren't going to have any other siblings that that separate you from your brothers. So, so in other words, there's no crossings. In, uh, if, if you list the nodes of a of a forest in pre-order, and you say that two things are equivalent if they're if they have if if they're brothers or sisters, uh, then th that's that that equivalence relation is is one that doesn't have any crossings. All right, and uh, so here's an example of such a one. Um, I, I I can um, well uh, so. So it's not going to have a crossing. The twos, uh, there are three twos, though. It's, it's not a matching because 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 you, you, some 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 uh, of these sets have, have more. Okay, but now we now we find the uh, uh, the dual of this, and again it's like a, a, a changing a stack to a Q. and so um, uh, I uh, decided that that was. Um, uh, it, this this example was too easy, so I. So I took another one, and hit, so here's a case of a of a um, uh, a non-crossing. This is a non-crossing set partition. It's not a matching, but it's a non-crossing set partition. Uh, that's uh, it, and you can see the restrict. I just wrote the restricted growth string down here, so you see this is this zero 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 uh, nested inside between the first two zeros is the ones, but there's no ones crossing it. Inside of the ones, there's some twos here. Inside between these two zeros, there's threes. Between these two zeros, I got four, and then some fives and sixes inside of the fours. But I, but I, th I you know, threw in stuff, but I wasn't going to have any any uh, any nest any crossing. And uh, you can see it in the you, you can see it in the x's because if I if you take any one of these rectangles, you, you take take any point on the boundary here and, and look at the at the rooks that, that that are above and to the left, there's never going to be uh, uh, an upward pair of rooks. There's no, you know, in, in this this hat, uh, if, if there was an upward pair, that would be a crossing. And so there's no crossings in this in this set partition. Okay. So now, see, well, what is the dual of this set partition? And the answer is this. I sorted all the x's into order. Uh, and basically, you out, you know, you, wherever there's an x, uh, you, you 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 drop it down to the lowest possible place and and, and sort them so that they all they will all go like this. Now you have only crossings. Um, now it 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 but was a little funny because you see, here's this x sitting way up here. It 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 must you know that you go from here and you get to the dual of this. It gives you this one. Um, uh, so uh, it's not as uh, as, as as simple uh, as as you might think that the, the way this happens, but here we are. Uh, the, uh, you see, the dual of of a non-nested thing is always looking pretty nice. It, 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 um, uh, I haven't proved this. I mean, this is an observation I made at 3:30 this afternoon. So, but I believe it must be true because I took a pretty random example. Right? It's got to be true. So, so in other words, we can understand non-crossing um, uh, the duals of, of non-crossing set partition. Now, another thing I looked at was self-dual set partitions. This is cute. I, I don't have time to, to tell you much about it, but the number of self-duals, you know, they, they equal their own dual. Uh, the number of them is a Fibonacci number. The, 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 uh, it goes, uh, it, you know, f, f sub 2n minus 1 is the number of self-dual set partitions. And here I've, I've written, written the 34 cases when uh, n equals 5. Uh, and I found a one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, Morse code sequences, which is known to be the Fibonacci number, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky correspondence, not real simple, but uh, but it, I think it's the best you can do. Um, and uh, so uh, these are the cases. Now, now, but a self-dual set, set partition is something where uh, the uh, the lambdas uh, uh, have to equal their transpose. So the only possible lambdas are zero and one. So that means that we never get more than one rook at a time. In our window to the left, and and um, 
And uh, so now um, uh, this uh, suggests that, you know, the, well, the, the, the million uh, problems suggested by all this stuff. But one of the things is let, we can talk about the width of a, of a set partition. And that is how big do the how many rooks are there ever present at, one, at once as, as they're marching along? You know, can, and, and is there, presumably, uh, you know, we could find out, how, you know, this is the case where the width is equal to uh, zero or one, um, uh, is the self-dual case. But what if I consider all set partitions of width two? How many of them are there? How many, you know, that's an enumeration problem that, that begs to be uh, solved. Um, uh, it's got to grow eventually because, uh, I mean, for fixed width, it's, it, it, it can very well be a, a, a simply exponential growth, but the, uh, the total number of set partitions grows faster than n factorial because it, you know, well, okay. So um, uh, here's, here's a, 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 the final thing I wanted to tell you is that all of this is still a special case of much more general stuff. <laughs> And that is, instead of, say, instead of talking on set partitions, let us talk about an arbitrary um, uh, placement of rooks on any shape of board whatsoever. So now I take another shape of board. And uh, uh, suppose, for example, I take the one I had before, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I, what was it, 4, 3, 1, 1. Three one one. Okay. Now um, I um, I consider all the ways to put rooks in this board. Uh, this is a problem that uh, is known to known to have a lot of interesting theory. That, uh, Adriano Garcia they call it, it worked out the. The, the, uh, it's called rook polynomials are, are are related to this anyway. Now walk along the edge of this diagram. Here I'm going to the right, up, up, right, right, up, right, up, right, right, right. Okay. Now I'm going to d generalize a, a vacillating tableau to a to, to a sequence of tableaus that starts with zero, ends with zero. But when I take a rightward step, I'm allowed to add a, add a rook. When I take an upward step, I'm allowed to subtract a rook. But instead of going up, cross, up, uh, you know, left, uh, you know, right, up, right, up, right, up, right, up, right, up, here I'm doing it in another sequence. So now I'm saying that lambda, you know, lambda 1 can be bigger than lambda 0. Lambda 2 can be smaller than lambda 1. Lambda 3 can be smaller than lambda 2. Here I'm allowed to go up. Here I'm allowed to go up. Here I'm allowed to, allowed to go down. OK? So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between all rook placements in this shape and a sequence of integer partitions that have the up and, up and down steps are confined to, the, to that place. Again, each one of these rook placements has a dual corresponding to taking the transpose of all those partitions, because those partitions will do the, the, the transpose of the partitions will do the same thing. And the dual depends on the, the boundary that I showed here. If I, it, if I take the dual with respect to, to a bigger boundary, it, it, might, it, it, it might move, move the rooks around. So for every class of, of rook polynomial, for every class of rook placements, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, a certain integer a sequence of integer sequences of integer partitions, and though and and the the one-to-one -one correspondence is has the property that it preserves, um, uh, you know that, that 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 there's a duality operation on it that uh, has miraculous uh, uh, properties, and uh, uh, that is um, uh, pretty mind blowing. So so. You see what, now maybe why I decided to add another page and a half to volume four when I when I heard about this I had to have I had to have this in there although I'm sure after a year goes by a lot more will be known about this about this kind of thing. Um, um, <clears throat> then uh, I was w working with Christian Krattenthaler when we said well now let's 
let's generalize this further, not to just allowing only one rook in a row, but let's allow, you know, several things in a, in a row. And, and, uh, and pretty soon we found out that if we generalize it uh, enough, we would rediscover theorems of Fomin that came out five years ago. Um, in other words, uh, uh, if you look at this whole thing I said today um, with a really uh, special viewpoint and not see any of the special uh, of the simple special cases, you would find out that um, that uh, a, a very general theory of uh, of um, of tableaus um, that was published some time ago actually gives us these results if you if you specialize 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 down so it, it, it it's it's just a, the moral is in mathematics very often um, y, 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 um, you get a general theorem you don't really understand it until you find many many special cases of it because it's very hard when you when you're given a problem to know what general theorem is this a special I mean there's 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 a huge number of specializations of any theorem and so when you learn a new theorem try to find simple cases of it and, and and often you'll find out that that tells you something new about those simple cases so so in a way this was uh, this this whole theory was was contained in another generalization but that generalization was so complicated nobody could could really perceive that it included this special case you know, or, or, or all of these special cases I've been talking about okay thanks a lot for listening so, More questions? Going back to the original correspondence between set partitions and sequences of these. Yeah. Up, and right. That's what, right. What was the what? What's one carryaway striking feature of set partitions that follows from this duality? Because uh, I, I didn't hear one that I thought, wow, you know, that's really. It was, well, the, the most striking was about the, connect, uh, the, the nesting with respect to crossing, because because set partitions. I mean, the nesting properties of set partitions are are uh, uh, some of the most important things about them. The the, the fact, yeah, the fact that the uh, um, I mean, the, there was a sequence of people had been studying uh, properties of 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 matchings. Uh, and then it turned out that uh, that uh, Stanley and these four other people said, "Oh, but it also applies to set partitions." And so, so in the special case of matchings, uh, the, uh, the the connection between matchings with different kind of nesting and so on was the uh, what was the, uh, uh, the the original spark to studying this. Mm -hmm. No, the, the other thing was just the fact that there was that integer partitions and set partitions have this connection that was without without respect to duality. I thought was um, uh, was uh, pr pretty remarkable as well. Yeah, wow. So you counted that some of the uh, that there are self-dual set partitions. Now, if we go down the specialization chain, you then specialize to matchings. It looks like there will be self-dual matchings, right? If you match everybody to its adjacent one. Um. Uh, certainly. And then, and then the next question is, are there self-dual permutations? No. No, okay. No, no, you can't have a self-dual permutation. Um, the, uh, uh, the, um, let's see, why is that trivial? Um, because, what? No, I mean, okay, you can't have a permutation that has a, that, that has uh, that has a corresponding um, uh, a partition bigger than one. I mean, the number of rooks in the rectangle is the number. It, so, so there is a self-dual permutation, but it's only in the case n equals one. Uh, n equals two. You're already building a a tableau that has two elements in it, so its transpose is, is going to be different. The, the partitions all have to be self conjugate have to be self conjugate, and 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 when you, whenever and there's no self conjugate partition of, of 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 two elements. If you could go from one to three, 
then we could have self dual thing, but then we need a different problem where we have more than one rook in a, in a row. <clears throat> there are self dual matchings. In fact, um, uh, I've shown all all the, um, the my Fibonacci construction here. This, these are the self dual set partitions, and so. Uh, well, these are uh, on five elements, so uh, you'd have to go to an even number of elements in order to get a matching. But, uh, but uh, self-dual involutions, in other words, uh, involution is a matching with other singleton elements as well. No. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Probably. Uh, take five minutes to find out how many self-dual matchings there are. <laughs>